Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be walking you through a couple of use cases on how Beyond Trust can help your organization secure these new cloud assets and devices and web accounts. So what we're looking at right now is a Windows 10 desktop that's been onboarded via Intune policies or what's now known as Microsoft Endpoint Management. And so this device hasn't been connected to the internal domain. It's just been joined to the internet connection and the user was able to onboard it through the OEM process, joining it to Azure AD only. And so I'm gonna sign in here as a company user under Windows Hello for my eFlood. Now, eFlood is a standard user on this system, but we also have privilege management for endpoint installed. And what that allows this user to do is to run approved applications that require elevation. So if I need to install an application, I would get prompted with what looks similar to a UAC prompt, but it's a customized message from our solution that can help you protect your end users' rights while still giving them the flexibility to install and elevate applications that are required to do their job functions. This is all also recorded on the back end, so you can see your users' application information and what kind of applications they're running on a day-to-day -day process and especially what applications are requesting elevation. So now moving on to our privilege remote access use case, I'm gonna securely access AWS and Azure resources in the cloud by signing in with my standard user account that I know the password to, and that is configured with multi-factor authentication. That'll show me access to the resources I have available through Privilege Remote Access. And you can see I have two examples here under my Cloud Web Access Jump Group. I have my AWS IAM Web Login account and my Azure AD Web Login account. And these are what's called Web Jumps. And so I'll easily double click this AWS IAM and it'll present me with a credential that is stored on the back end and rotated by our password safe solution. And it's easy for me, I just select the credential I want and select OK. And that will securely log me into my AWS Management Console, where I can get to the resources that I've been provisioned on the AWS IAM side and get to my EC2 instances. Going back to the Home tab for Privilege Remote Access, we're gonna do the same thing for my Azure AD web login. Simply double click it, select the credentials that I would like. Here I'm gonna select my Azure GUI account. And that's gonna log me into my Azure AD web account. And there you can see the AZ GUI account. And this account is being stored on the back end and automatically rotated. I don't know what the password is to that account. I just injected it into the privilege remote access session. Here I can get to my virtual machines, anything I need to within Azure Active Directory. Going back to our homepage for privilege remote access, we're now gonna see how we can leverage privilege remote access to access those Amazon EC2 instances and Azure virtual machines within those web logins that we just looked at. So here you can see I have an AWS EC2 instances jump group, and there I have two EC2 machines. One is a Windows machine that we can get to via RDP, and one is a Linux machine we can access via SSH, what's known as a shell jump. And so to access the Windows system, we're just gonna simply double click it and leverage credentials that we're storing within our vault that are being securely rotated on the back end going to automatically log me in to that Windows system and from there I can access its resources and do any kind of testing or development I need. Moving back to the PRA homepage, we can now look at the Linux system, which is a Red Hat system. And simply double click it there. You can see I'm storing a local account that's called Utility01. This one, I'm actually storing the SSH keys as well as rotating them. 
And from there, I'm able to access the command shell for this Linux system. Being able to run the commands I need to be able to run the testing. There's also a file transfer available so I can securely get files over to this uh, Linux Red Hat or CentOS box. Going back to our PRA homepage, we're going to move over to the Azure VM jump group. And there you can see I have a single Azure Windows server that's deployed in Azure Virtual Machine. Same thing, we're going to double click it. Leverage credentials that are securely stored in the vault. And it's going to give us access to that server without us having to know what credentials we use to sign into it. We're just leveraging what's provided to us through the privilege remote access and all on the back end being rotated by password safe. Switching gears to take a look at some of the reporting for our cloud solutions. Here we have a privilege management for console dashboard showing what computers have checked in and received the latest policy. Any that are awaiting a policy or on an earlier version as, a, as well as what version of software they're on if they require any updates. We also have a dedicated reporting interface for these endpoints. Any event on those Windows or Mac systems is being sent to our, our event for collection. And you can see from a administrative perspective, what applications are being run in your environment? How do your users interacting with those messages? And what's being provided privileges for escalation? And you get a really great view from a summary perspective, as well as um, some nice administrative key findings where you can see how many folks have attempted to log in with administrative credentials or have attempted to modify group permissions. And all this is drillable where you can click on it and you can see that this user attempted to elevate their permissions, pretty much add themselves to the local admins group, but it was then blocked based on our policy. You can also see what events are coming in. So every event has a lot of information associated with it. Not only what application was run, what specific process, what child and parent are associated with it for applications, who ran it, pretty much the who, what, where, when, and why, what policy they're in, kind of what event type returned in the event log, as well as what applications have been run without your environment. You know, what users are running the most applications, which ones are requesting elevation. A lot of great insight for your end users, as well as insight to the overall user experience, whether that user is getting presented with a message and they're canceling it, or they're right clicking an, ass, an application and running it as an administrator or if they are presented with a challenge and response message that they then have to reach out to the help desk with. So a lot of really great insights that you can get into these cloud managed devices that aren't necessarily checking in via VPN, but as long as they have an internet connection, they're able to send these types of events in and you're able to get that type of insight and provide privilege escalation and management for your end users. Moving over to privilege remote access in the cloud, Looking at its reporting interface, here you can see our user eFlood and all the sessions they have checked out through Privilege Remote Access. To view the session recording, you can download that M4V file and open it and play it with any video editor. And as you can see, it's a video playback of what that user went through, what they went on and clicked and opened up throughout that experience. So you can go back and audit your users and see what they did within that instance. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at password safe reporting that provides a lot of great out of the box reports to provide insight for not only your user accounts, but also the password change activity and password age. Taking a look at one of the password age reports, here you can see which passwords are, you know, six months to a year, three to six months, and you can provide those policies and enforce that change. Get really good insight to see which passwords are kind of those low hanging fruit if nobody's logged into them. 
in a couple of years and the password age is a couple of years old, it might be a good time to change it. We also have scheduled password change configuration report. So here you can see kind of the busiest days for password changes. Most of the time the password change is gonna happen the first of the month, but if not, it'll happen during the check-in process. And you can see which top password rule usage for specific passwords are being applied. 